Hi everyone, welcome back to Frame and Flow. In this quick tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a condensation effect and animate droplets in Spline. Let's jump right in. Before we dive into Spline, let's break down the effect. As you can see, the condensation effect has two layers. The first layer features static droplets, while the second layer contains animated droplets. With that said, let's head over to Spline and start creating. First, we'll download our Coca-Cola can from the Spline library. If you go to the bottle section, you'll find the can there. Click on it, and you'll see the Coca-Cola can appear in our scene. The next step is to create the droplets. We start by creating a sphere and making it very small, around one unit. Next, in the Cloner tab, we'll turn it on and change the type to Object. From the menu, we'll select the body of the Coca-Cola can. Now, if we increase the number of droplets to about 800, you can see our little spheres on the soda can. Now that we have our droplets, we can randomize their sizes. Let's turn on the randomization and change the noise type to Simplex. We can adjust the scale to something like 500, then set the scale to 1. As you can see, we now have droplets of different sizes. You can play with these numbers, change the seed, and adjust the rotation to achieve the perfect look. Now that we have our droplets, let's create our animated droplets. To do that, we'll first duplicate the body of the soda can. For a better understanding of what's going on, let's hide the soda can so we only see the duplicated body. Next, we need to delete some parts of the mesh. Click on the Edit Mesh button, and we'll delete the top and bottom parts of the polygons. The next step is to duplicate our droplet. Change the object to the modified body and reduce the number to about 60. Instead of using simplex noise, we will use Perlin noise. Now let's see what happens when we change the Y position. As we increase it, the droplets start moving, but they are going up regardless of whether I decrease or increase the position. To fix that, we need to rotate the body 180 degrees. Now if we change the position, you can see the droplets moving down. Thanks to the noise, they don't move at the same speed. Some go faster while others go slower, which adds to the realism. Next, let's adjust a few things on our second body. We don't need to see this object, but if we hide the layer, we lose the droplets as well. So we'll go to the material section and make it fully transparent. In the shadow section, we'll turn off both receiving and casting shadows. This way, this object won't interfere with the main soda can. Now let's turn on the main can. Now we'll add animation to the second set of droplets we created. To demonstrate, let's change the color of the animated droplets so we can distinguish them from the static ones. Next, we're going to create a second state and adjust the Y position to make the droplets move down. Then we'll create events, add a transition, and increase the duration. When we go to play mode, you'll see that our droplets are moving down. Basically, this is how easy it is to create condensation for any object you want. Now that we know how to create the condensation, let's look at the finished project. I'll give you a few tips and tricks to add more realism to your scene. First, let's examine the droplets material. The base material is very simple. We just used a glass material with a matte cap, along with a Fresnel. Nothing too special so far, but for the animated droplets, we use a displacement map to make them look more realistic as they move down. To demonstrate, let's turn off the static droplets and go to play mode. Now you can see that as the droplets move down, they have a little bit of animation themselves. You can achieve this effect by using a displacement map, creating a second state for it, and adding some movement to your displacement. Then you can create a start event and add a transition.
Another adjustment we made was to the material of the soda can. We changed the lighting to physical to give it that metallic look. If we revert to the previous setting, which was Lambert, you can see it looks flat and lacks a metallic appearance. Changing it to physical results in a more realistic finish. It's also essential to have the right field of view for your camera, which we explained in our previous tutorial about the PS5 controller. You can watch that episode for many tips on creating better shots for your products. Additionally, consider using post-processing effects to enhance the visual results. If I turn off the effects, you can see that the scene changes drastically. So make sure to use these tools to your advantage. Finally, adding ambient shadows will give you more realism as well, which we also discussed in our PS5 controller episode. This was a quick tutorial on creating condensation droplets and adding them to your objects. I hope you found it helpful. Please hit the like and subscribe button, and we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Thanks for watching, and take care.